Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics, and today's video, I'm speed painting, but also narrating the process. So, uh, using the rule of thirds here to uh, kind of find my positioning of my uh, form. So, uh, a trick that uh, a lot of artists use, obviously, to place uh, elements in the scene that you want to direct the viewer to. So, if you notice, I got the uh, face of the creature and the wizard both on the... Uh, the dots and the rules of third there kind of thing so yeah so figured I would try a video like this where I show you the entire painting from start to finish but I also explain you know kind of my thought process uh, I'm not a very seasoned um, digital painter when it comes to this type of uh, style or art uh, I love doing this but I'm still kind of finding my way so you'll probably see that in here where I start to block in some immediate you know shadows and dark to lights and then I start to do a little bit of texture lines and start painting in some white highlights and I just kind of bounce around I don't know if that's a right or wrong way to approach it it's just what I do so I'm I try to develop the immediate forms first uh, there you see me flipping the canvas uh, which is really good to do it immediately shows you um, I don't know if this works for everybody but it immediately shows me things that are off-center and I start realizing that the jaw on this character is really off. And here you see me add an overlay layer and uh, start drawing with red uh, digital ink or whatever to try to get some better alignment to the face. You know, and the thing is, this is a, uh, kind of an alien or a creature of some sort, monster, fantasy art. So it's not like he's got to have symmetry. You know, he's not run, winning any uh, beauty pageants anytime soon. But at the same time, you know, I don't want it to look... Um, unprofessional or that I just made some glaring mistakes uh, I'm sure I'll have some of those by the time it's done anyways so I got to minimize that when I can so uh, yeah I, I, f I found myself in this painting a couple times kind of getting a little bit lost and and f feeling the need to paint in a variety of ways uh, sometimes I switch to 100% opacity and paint some of my values in that way and select from current values in the painting it's actually the way I'm painting right here. And then other times I um, add a layer and paint over with a layer. I predominantly, for the most part of this painting, did this all in one layer. And there's reasons why that's uh, very forgiving, or I shouldn't say forgiving, very fast. And then there's reasons why um, it's a little bit less forgiving, I should say. So, you know, separating the elements um, can really help you not only get hard edges on certain aspects of your painting but also make it a little bit easier to paint behind and do some certain effects so I didn't do that on this one I painted it all predominantly on one layer I added a couple effect layers towards the end especially with the color modes but um, as far as the tonal aspects I just pretty much stayed on one layer so I'm not saying that's the right or wrong way to do it uh, there's pros and cons to each way of doing it so yeah just keep trying to play around with this and and uh, you'll notice that I actually paint uh, different overlay uh, patterns like I didn't use any textures in this I probably should have you know it's really it can be really quick and yield some really nice effects if you grab like say scales from a lizard or um, textures from an elephant would have been great for a character like this and start laying those in it helps you yield a really nice um, realistic effect to your paintings uh, I didn't do that I wanted to try to paint in all my textures it's a little more time consuming but I just wanted to give it a go and and kind of I, I try to go back and forth from various techniques I don't I don't really um, stay on any one thing I don't know if it's because I'm a little attention deficit or I just uh, I just like to always change it up and stay excited about what I'm doing so so yeah, just painting in a bunch of different lines. You'll see I zoom back pretty far quite a bit. I'm doing that to also, again, check my work. It's kind of the same thing as flip, flipping the canvas. Uh, a lot of times when I see my artwork very small, I can usually find something wrong with it. Uh, you know, more so than when I zoom up too close, I often can't really take in the whole painting and see uh, see any, you know, large mistakes that way. So, 
I probably should have separated a lot of the elements, you know, looking back on this objectively, I, I think that I should have. Um, but I wanted to try it this way and see what I what I got. And overall, I end up getting to a, an area where I'm happy with the painting. Uh, could it be better? Yes, it can always be better. Um, but this is also one that I sat down and did uh, from start to finish in under, I want to say just under six hours with color and everything. So that being said, you know, am I happy with it in that regard? Yes. You know, could I refine it? for weeks and, and come up with something a lot better yeah of course but um you know I, I try to time myself and and produce stuff like you know this wasn't a professional piece but it could have been so i i try to treat it as such so yeah just really painting back and forth now one of the things that i do when i'm confused about my painting and i'm trying to find my forms and find my shapes and find my textures I just keep painting back and forth from dark to light and I wait till I see something in the artwork it's almost like just uh, throwing paint on the wall and waiting for something to stand out and look cool um, you know it's not as uh, as oblique as that but it it basically it seems to work for me you know uh, sometimes I, I get stuck and I gotta keep doing it other times I paint something and immediately it, it feels like it's gelling and I just go with it. Um, it's also why you see me paint different shapes of strokes. I'm constantly sizing the brush up and down. I'm doing that all because I'm, you know, trying to see into the painting a little bit more and, you know, the different strokes and the different overlapping strokes uh, help you to see, you know, if something might look cool or not. Uh, if you, you know, obviously if you kept the brush the same size, very small, and you sketch the entire time that would yield a, a totally different result and you'd have to be very specific about what you're putting down because you're basically just drawing at that point point. and painting is um, you know I'm no old pro at this but what I would say is painting is not drawing it's it, it's it helps to be a good artist and to be able to draw uh, definitely but um, painting is a is a different uh, monster so to speak it's basically you know blocking in larger shapes of shadows and form uh, which can be done a number of ways and then every now and then it's good to kind of sketch things in there uh, you know sketching definitely helps that process uh, but you notice as I started this I, I ultimately didn't even sketch it out I just went for it and you know basically was able to create this creature just by some loose uh, rough guidelines in the very beginning so you know, but I'm not saying don't sketch. You know, sketching is highly important. I, I'm myself more of a sketch artist than a painter. So, you know, I come at it from the other direction. But I, as of, uh, you know, the the last few years, I've really got into painting and really enjoy it. Uh, I don't think I'm great at it yet, but uh, I'm definitely intrigued by it and will continue to do it until I, well, not until I, but <laughs> I don't say until I get great at it, but I, I definitely wouldn't stop then. I'd keep going, right? So, um, so yeah, just kind of shading that down. Um, another thing I do, uh, you can kind of see it here a bit, is I, sh if I don't like something, I shade it down really far, uh, grab the dodge tool, punch the uh, highlights back up, um, and try to find the form again that way. Here, just kind of painting the highlights on the little wizard dude. I uh, probably should have made him a little bit more detailed, but I, I really didn't want him to be too much of the focus. I just wanted him in there to give scale to the uh, the big old beast over there so and plus it gives a a little bit more of a story to it you know it's funny how if you just draw that creature uh, by himself it's you know it can be okay but it doesn't have scale and it doesn't have any kind of um, other emotion I guess but as soon as you add a character in there uh, especially a small one like that there's a whole other dynamic that seems to occur that's actually what got me to want to do this uh, this painting was that I kept seeing all these cool monster ones like this with the the tiny little person and you know they're real popular obviously in fantasy art and science fiction paintings and I'm like you know what I, I haven't done a whole lot of that I need to I need to go ahead and do more of that so I'm gonna probably do a series of these get a few of them under my belt and I'll uh, I'll keep bringing them to you here on the channel and 
get your guys' opinion and you know answer any questions you might have about the process. So, so yeah, um, if you do have any questions about it, let me know. And also, I do appreciate you stopping in and watching these uh, these uh, videos of mine. Very much appreciated. So, be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you don't mind. And uh, if you got any questions at all, drop them in the comments section below. I do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. And as far as the color here, I just drop in a couple uh, modes, overlay. I start with a color mode, then an overlay mode, and then sometimes a multiplier, another overlay mode over top of it. And that's really it. I just keep fine tuning it until I get uh, some uh, decent colors. I tend to work overly saturated and then tone that down right at the end and add a little bit of blur or something like that just to, you know, give it a little bit more dynamic and appeal. And then the last thing that I usually do at the end of a painting like this is merge it completely down and play with my colors a little bit more and also uh, sample from the existing color palette and painting, you know, paint in final details. So I don't know that I show that on here, but I wanted to make sure I let you know about that. So yeah, that's about it. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Let me know and uh, we will talk to you soon. Keep drawing, keep having fun. Bye for now.